Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. All right, so this week it is spring, and as they say, um, April showers bring May flowers, or in this case, I suppose, March showers. So we're getting a little bit of rain where I'm at, and just kind of wanted to do this dreamy, quick little tutorial um, that's very unique in that we're just using black and white for today's tutorial. Usually my paintings are very colorful, but just sticking with black and white today. Uh, and then I have a little bit of extra materials for the painting today too. So I actually have my clear ruler today and a pencil and then four brushes for the painting. So I have my big square brush, a medium sized pointed brush, a small detail brush, and then an even smaller detail brush. I'm going to get that in the water cup off the side of the screen. If you'd like to see a full materials list of everything that you need to paint along and everything that I recommend, go ahead and check the description box below. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our background step. Okay, so I'm actually going to be sketching out my window shape here with the help of my ruler, um, just for a little bit of kind of uh, ease here so we don't have to be uh, so hard on ourselves with our straight lines. So I'm gonna come up from the bottom here a little bit kind of just eyeballing it, but using the ruler to create straight lines. And I'm going to create the bottom here of what will be my window sill, just like so. And I'm gonna come in probably a little bit further than I went out there. It's okay, because we're gonna be covering uh, a lot of this here in just a minute uh, with black and with all kinds of colors. So this is kind of just our little pre-sketch. I don't wanna go too high up. I'm going to have a slight curve here. Um, so it looks like I'm going up. I guess I could measure it. Let's see, that confuses me. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna wing it. I'm not a mathematical person, you must forgive me. But if you wanna get really technical, please feel free to do so. Just helping me create that right angle there. And then I'm gonna go across. Mm -hmm. Probably to about there. Just like so, make sure that's on the same side there. The same uh, distance to the top, okay. Then. Just like so. And then what I wanna do here at the top is I'm gonna kinda uh, wing it a little bit. But I wanna curve to go from that point all the way over here. And since that is gonna be 12 inches, I suppose our six inch there is going to be halfway. Just kinda bringing that up like so. And then I'm going to use that to help me curve my way down and meet the other side of the window there, okay? That's the most technical that we'll get. <laughs> so good job, give yourself a pat on the back uh, if you manage to create this shape. But of course you have the benefit of being able to fast forward and rewind. If you need to see that again, I'm gonna do a line straight across like so. And then also one down the center, blocking out that window, and then one right in the middle. And if we wanna be exact, yeah, we got six and a half inches, so three and a quarter. Be about there. Okay, it's like we're designing a house or something. Very technical. Or architects today for a minute with this window. <laughs> it's gonna make it much easier to cover with paint later. <laughs> that looks great. All right, technical part complete. Let's go ahead and jump in with some paints now. We're gonna be working inside of our window. I'm gonna use my medium sized brush. And we're going to create a lovely kind of street scene in the window here that our cute little kitty cat is looking out at. 
Okay, so I'm gonna grab just some gray. We're gonna be working with shades of gray the whole time. And for this whole sort of background scene, we wanna keep it relatively light with the gray. That way when we come in with the dark black later, it has a lot of contrast. Okay, so just keep that in mind as we build our little composition here. And what I'm gonna do is just start building some buildings. Architects again today, very architectural instead of uh, the natural shapes that we often do. And I'm gonna put them on this angle, which is going to give us some perspective here as if we are maybe in one of these similar big buildings, just like so. We'll have a little, little peekaboo there in between. Building some buildings here. I'm gonna grab a little bit of gray. Actually, let's grab our biggest brush for this part. Brush upgrade size. A little bit more since I have a big space to fill in. I don't wanna to go too dark with my gray, but I wanna have some really nice moody gray clouds. And it's okay if you cover that sketch line. You should still be able to see it a tiny bit with these relatively light colors and we're using a fair amount of water as well. Okay, a little bit now of white here near the horizon, but we're keeping that sort of fluffy, cloudy day, rainy day brushstroke texture here. Okay, just a, a dreary day, the kind that honestly I love. And good. Let's add a little bit more white up into our sky. Okay, looks good. And I can still sort of see my sketch. That's all right. I can see where it starts and where it ends. So <laughs> that'll still help me as a guide later. Okay, gonna grab my medium sized brush again and then do these buildings. And this is what's so fun about working with black and white is that it's so forgiving and so simple. And you can really just have fun and start creating these shapes. And the same goes for when we're doing silhouettes later. Um, but just kind of pick a shade of gray and go crazy. Just You're gonna wanna go up and down here and then grab a little bit of white perhaps and kind of blend that into it as well. And we're being really messy because this is like a rainy day, right? And it's like warped outside the window. Okay, and you're just going to build your little city view, just like so. Okay, just going up and down always with the brush strokes a little area there. Okay, see how simple that is? They're really just playing with shades of gray. Just like so. And maybe these buildings, you could go a teeny shade darker. Very subtle differences make a difference in the end. Very nice. Okay. Each one of these buildings, its own shape. All right, just kind of a vague architectural feel here for all my city folk. I don't think I've ever lived like downtown in a city. <laughs> so this would be like me in their b and with my cat, which I don't have a cat either. <laughs> this is just my imagination. All right. What city are you visiting in your imagination? Let me know in the comments. I've been, just had travel on the brain. I think a lot of us have after being cooped up for so long. Okay. 
Okay, but at least we can travel in our paintings, right? Okay, almost finished here with the buildings. I'm gonna grab a little bit more of a dark color for these lines of separation in between. Okay. And just some black and white in there. Nice streaks of color or tones rather. All right. A little bit more here coming out from the bottom. Very nice. Looking good. Okay. All right, we're gonna start working with our silhouette now here just a little bit. I'm gonna grab a little bit more white and fill that in really quick before I jump in. Okay, want that a little bit stronger of a line there. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and just get the edges all filled in with black now. And you're gonna to wanna to bring this line right to your little composition and create a nice frame. Okay, after this background step, we'll have the whole canvas filled in with color or with paint, black and white. All right, just going across there. A very satisfying step. We're gonna go up along the sides as well. A little bit of water always helps that paint go nice and smooth. All right. And we're gonna wanna create as straight of a line as we can, hopefully still seeing a little bit of that sketch line here and there to help guide us. You're just gonna go off the edge there with that black. I think I may need a little bit more black. Okay. Okay, just got myself a little bit more black there, but we're just gonna keep going. Getting that all filled in. So we have a little bit of extra space here at the bottom bigger bar of black than on the sides because that's where our window sill is. That's where we're gonna put our little kitty cat and books and coffee cup and really whatever else you'd like to put in your imaginary window sill. Okay, and I could be using my big brush for this, I suppose. But I like to have a little bit more control with the medium sized brush. Okay, I think it's almost time to invest in new brushes. Had these for probably six years, I guess. All right. Okay, and then the top part is a little bit trickier. Want to find that sketch line that we started with and just have that nice arch all the way across. And get that all filled in with black as well. Lovely. Okay, kind of step back and make sure that's as even as I can make it. It's a little bit better. All 
All right, yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's go ahead now and let this layer dry, and then we're gonna come back and add all our little final details. So I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, artists, welcome back. We have a dry background and I got some more black and white on my piece of palette paper. I rinsed my brushes and got some fresh water at break as well. Let's go ahead and jump right back into it. All right, so I'm gonna grab my second to smallest brush, this guy right here. And I think I'm gonna use my ruler again, uh, since I did cover a lot of these lines with paint. So I can see still a little bit of my straight up and down line. So I'm going to start with that and come down just till about there. And let's see, I can see it a little bit still, but the objective here is to go right across the top Little bit wobbly. <laughs> Holding my breath. <laughs> Straight lines can be tricky. Okay, I'm gonna come back with that. Just like so. I'm just gonna go over it a couple times until it is relatively all the same length and thickness here. Okay, like so, not too bad. Don't be afraid to get really close to your canvas. I have to keep my big head out of the way, <laughs> but you guys don't, go ahead and just get Real up close there if you need to. I think real quick with my ruler. Let's see here. I want to do a little measurement. Like so. So yeah, six and a half, so three and a quarter. And a quarter, just finding that mid length again. And try my best here to keep it straight, going all the way across there to the other side. Little sections here of our window. Just like so, very focused step here. Okay, just trying to get it as even as I can. Like so. All the way across, straight lines, black and white. We're deviating from my norm, which kind of feels good, I think. <laughs> Mixing it up. Okay, and then just continuing my up and down line. Like so. And then we will have our sectioned out window. Very nice. Okay. Just like so. It looks pretty good. Remember, there's no such thing as perfection. If you have a pretty thick, pretty straight line, then you're doing pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and add our little kitty cat and books and coffee now. I think I'll go ahead and start with my books over here on the right. I'm just really simply going to do a couple fairly small rectangles, just like so. Then I'm going to stack them right on top of each other. We have a couple books 
in our window, just like so. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white with that same brush and just quickly do a couple little highlights right along the top there of the book. And you can tone it down a little bit with black right on top. So you want it to definitely be gray. You don't want too, too bright of a highlight. There we go. You can just kind of tone things down ever so slightly. And then right next door here, we're gonna do a little mug. And this really can be any shape that you'd like. My mug is going to be a little bit taller than those two books. Okay, and then since I'm a neat freak and in my mind maybe there's a little coaster. <laughs> if we're gonna put it in this nice windowsill. And we can do a little handle, maybe coming from the side there like that. I'm gonna grab a teeny bit of white now as well. And just throw some highlights on my little mug and on the handle. And as always, you can tone it down a little bit with your black. If you go too heavy handed, just really slight little details there in the black and white is actually quite forgiving. Okay, now we're gonna do our adorable little kitty cat. And so the cat we wanna maybe have be about three or less uh, around there, times as tall as our coffee mug. Depends of course on what kind of cat you have. We're gonna start with a sort of butt of the cat, the main body part here which will just be an oval like so. So he would have a little tail coming down here, but this is the beauty of the uh, silhouettes, is that we don't need to do the details there because it's just gonna be overlapping into the black. Now we're almost building kind of like a little kitty snowman like so, and then with a little head right on top. Super cute. Looking good. And then of course, a couple little ears coming from right up there. And he is looking down onto the street intently. I grab my even smaller brush for a couple little whiskers. And maybe some body adjustments slightly. Okay. Really teeny tiny brush strokes. Just a little bit of whiskers. So cute. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of white and I'm going to highlight his little head, his little ears. So on both sides there, that's gonna be a little bit too much white. Just tone that down slightly for effect. And we'll highlight on the body as well. On either side there. Perfect. Okay. Little tiny highlights <laughs> here and there, making that little kitty look curious. Let's see, I think a little bit, sort of more roundness over there. Okay, and maybe a little bit further out here too. Okay, pretty cute. Just kind of finessing that area around there. Okay, now, now we're gonna add a couple little drips in our window, which is sort of the piece de la resistance here of the painting. So I'm gonna start with just some white little dots here and there. Like so. 
just like that. Okay, and now a little bit of black on that teeny tiny brush. And very daintily, we're going to have a couple little lines kind of coming down. And then you just push a little harder once you get to the bottom, and you'll get a little drip shape. Like so. We're going to do that with a dark gray and then come right on top with a white right next to it. Just like so. Kind of wiggling our way down. Very cute. Okay. And maybe a couple of drips are a little bit bigger. Like so, here and there, a little bit of watery trails. Pretty cute. Let's add some more. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Just like so. A little white right next to it. Very, very thin lines here, a little bit wiggly. And they can even be sort of disjointed. Like so. Maybe our little kitty is just looking at those strips. Drip down the window. Okay. Pretty cute. A few more here and there. Some white as well, always right along with the gray. Final little steps here. If you've been painting along today, I would love to see your artwork. And I've created a group called the, uh, it's a Facebook group called the Art Club. And we would love to have you join us over there. Love to see what you're working on. Whether it be this painting today from painting along with me or just from your own imagination, all art is welcome there. It's a very supportive community. Okay, we're just adding quite a few of those little drips. I'm gonna also have a little bit of steam coming up from my coffee here. And a couple little wavy brush strokes. Just like so, how cute is that? Disjointed a little bit. Super duper cute. What a lovely day this would be. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments. Okay, that's looking very cute. Few more drops here and there. I also want to mention you can now find my videos on a special section of the website Painting Tube. It's a great source of all sorts of curated videos that all teach painting classes and art of different levels. If you'd like to check out some intermediate or advanced tutorials. It's a great place to find them. And you'll now find Paint Along with Sky in its own section for beginner artists. Okay, just adding a couple more drips here and there. Also, if you are really enjoying these classes or you have a secret crafty talent or art that you'd like to share and you've been uh, I'm curious on how to start a pop-up from home painting class company or business, a pop-up arts and crafts business. I'm starting a special school called Art Party Academy that is designed to teach teachers how to start their own and make quite a bit of extra income in the process 
of spreading the joy of creativity. It doesn't have to be painting. You could do tie-dye or I've done a uh, scarf dipping class was super cool. You could do candle making. The options are endless. Anything that you can imagine. Relatively low overhead, easy to start, and I've made a lot of money uh, over the years teaching these kind of classes. So I'm going to be sharing my knowledge. More information about that course, which will be offered, I believe, quarterly. Still kind of figuring out the details. Um, but check that out on the website and in the description box below as well. Okay, I think this is almost to where I'm gonna call it quits. So hard to stop adding these drips. <laughs> um, but I think that's probably good for now. So let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. Did you like the black and white or are you anxious to get back to those bright colors that I'm so known for? Um, we would love to have you over in the art club. Please check out Painting Tube and Art Party Academy. And that is all I have for us this week. So until next time, stay creative.